Number five, many plastic materials are organic polymers that contain carbon and hydrogen. The oxidation of these plastics in air to form carbon dioxide and water is a spontaneous process. However, plastics, you know, plastic materials tend to persist in the environment and then explain. Okay. So for now, we've, we've basically been talking about combustion of hydrocarbons, right? But now we're introducing a new idea that's talking about plastics, right? They're, ta- they're saying to us that plastics are also kind of just like hydrocarbons, right? They contain carbon and hydrogen and they oxidize, right, in the air to form carbon dioxide and water. So for us, let's just say that we have CXHY. I have no idea how many carbons are in plastic. I mean, there's thousands. It's like a slew. It's like a polymer, right? And they said it was a polymer. So we have a slew of carbons. We have even more hydrogens, you know, put together, plus O2. It's got to be in the air. And spontaneously, this will form carbon dioxide, which is gas, and water, which is also gas. It's acting as basically a combustion reaction. And this is plastic. Okay. But even though it's spontaneous, why do they still never go away, right? And we see it more apparent now than ever. You know, there's no more plastic... um, straws at, you know, restaurants or takeout places. Um, you know, talking about plastic in the ocean is, is very bad for the environment. Why does plastic tend to persist if it's basically undergoing carbon di- uh, undergoing carbon dioxide, undergoing combustion, right? Because combustion is a very quick process, right? All you need to, is to do is just light like a spark and combustion will happen. But This process, even though it is spontaneous, spontaneous reactions just say that it will happen naturally if the conditions are met. So naturally, plastic will decompose to, you know, to form carbon dioxide and H2O. However, spontaneous reactions basically do not have a say as to how long the process is going to take. Some spontaneous reactions happen very quickly. Other spontaneous reactions, like when you have diamond converting into graphite or plastics turning into CO2 plus H2O, they happen so slow. So the idea here is that even though it's a spontaneous reaction, spontaneous reactions are not necessarily fast. So that's why we should basically, you know, dispose of plastics the correct way according to, you know, where you live as best as we can, because they're not going anywhere as far as, far as you know, the, the amount of time that we're on earth. Um, so this is called ke- uh, kinetically stable, kinetically, am I spelling this right? Kinetically, kinetically, I hope that's right. Stable. I'm looking at it and I'm like, mm, is it kinetically? Kinet, kinetic, I guess. We'll, we'll go with that. But I guess you guys, you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about. So if something is kinetically stable, right? Kinetics is talking about the rate of something. And if something is kinetically stable, that means it does not happen super fast. So it's, it's very slow process, a very slow process. And that's what the combustion of plastics is. It's a spontaneous reaction. However, it's kinetically stable, which means that even though it's going to happen, it's going to take years and years, and it's a very slow process. So that's why plastic materials tend to persist in the environment, because there are some spontaneous reactions that are not kinetically stable, which means that they will happen, boom, in an instant, basically like you know, combustion of gasoline, but others, plastics, they are going to break down at a much slower process. And that's why they persist. I really hope this, you know, helps out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and I will be talking to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.